right, so what, uh, I want to take a few minutes today and take a look at this problem that involves a conservation of momentum um, of a couple of objects. And what makes this a little bit different is that with this problem, we're looking at uh, conservation of momentum in two dimensions in both the x and the y. It's not just a straight line conservation of momentum problem. Those are boring and fascist. So we're going to take a look at this one. So basically we have a two kilogram ball going two meters per second to the right and it's a four kilogram ball that is at rest. And uh, they just kind of ricochet off each other. Um, let's say that the velocity of ball two after they hit is point two five meters per second. We have the angles and we want to know the velocity of ball one after it hits. Nice little conservation of momentum problem. The thing to keep in mind is that with the conservation of momentum, initial momentum is equal to final momentum. Initial momentum is our final. Now, when we're involving multiple dimensions, like here we have motion in the x direction and in the y direction, then what it comes down to is that my um, initial momentum in the x is equal to my final momentum in the x, and that the initial momentum in the y is equal to final momentum in the y. Y. We have to break it down into the X and Y. Um, it's not just overall momentum, but it's the momentum in both dimensions that's conserved. In this particular problem, it's simplified because we know one of the one of the uh, velocities um, after the collision. We know we know this velocity right there. That makes the problem greatly simplified. And so I'm going to do it in a little bit of a simplified version. If I didn't know that, that complicates the problem. That's, I'm going to do another problem like that later on. So to begin with, I'm going to approach this as looking at what my initial momentum is and then um, setting that equal to my final momentum. It, it, I, it might sound like the same approach you're supposed to take. Um, it's just a slightly different approach than what I do in class. And, and, I look at, and I look at my before conditions, and what this tells me is my initial momentum in the y direction is zero. There is no um, y component of velocity before they collide. And so I have no y momentum, which means the momentum over, over after they collide, the y momentum must equal zero. And, and, and that simplifies the problem a little bit. And that's really what I'm going to look at. OK, so we're going we're gonna to pick this thing up at looking at the conservation of momentum. And basically, my before momentum is zero. And I'm just looking at it in the y direction. My before momentum in the y direction is zero. My after momentum in the y direction is going to be the momentum of object one, only in the y direction after the collision plus the momentum of object two, but just in the y direction after the collision. And conservation of momentum says I can set those things equal to each other. So that's where I'm going to kind of pick up. Um, instead of saying the momentum of object one in the y direction, I'm going to say mass one times the velocity of object one in the y direction after the collision plus mass 2 times the velocity of object 2, but only in the y direction after the collision. Now, here's where we have to go back to our diagram. The velocity of object 1 in the y direction and the velocity of object 2. Here's my overall velocity for object 1. And here's my overall velocity for object two. I want to break it up into so much as in the x, actually both of them, 
and so much is in the y. This is what I'm interested in. This is the velocity of object 1 in the y direction after the collision. This is the velocity of object 2 in the y direction after the collision. These are the numbers I'm interested in. Since I know this angle is 30 degrees, this angle is 45 degrees, I know the hypotenuse of, of my triangle. It's either y1 prime or 0.25 meters per second. I can get those y velocity components. And basically, the main thing is, since it's the opposite side, I'm looking at the sign. So let me go back down here to my expression. And I'm going to say 0 is equal to m1. And my y velocity component is my overall velocity. That's my hypotenuse times the sine of 30 degrees. And that is object 1. And then for object 2, the velocity is the sine of 45. And I'm going to say m2 v2 prime sine of 45. Now, here's where we're going to have to do a little double check. This velocity for object 1 is upward, so that is a positive y component. This velocity, though, for object 2 is downward. This is a negative velocity. So I need to correct for that. And I'm going to do that simply by changing this sign from a positive to a negative. You've got to be careful. And I'm changing it to negative because this y velocity for object 2 is downward. So now at this point, um, it's probably uh, what I know is m1 v1 prime sine 30 is equal to m2 v2 prime sine 45. And we're solving for v1 prime. And then once we plug in the numbers, you do the math, and that should work out to be 0.73 meters per second. And that's our velocity after the collision for object 1. OK. Two-dimension momentum problem. Um, not overly challenging. But it's not too bad. Um, you didn't have to do you didn't have to do the momentum in both directions. I could have picked the momentum in the x direction and set those equal to each other. I still would have gotten the same answer. I only picked y because it's a zero. My initial momentum was zero. If I wanted to do x, then my initial momentum in the x is simply two kilograms times two meters per second, since that's zero. Um, and my expression would have been 4 is equal to momentum of object 1 in the x direction after the collision plus momentum of object 2 in the x direction after the collision. And you just go and you have to break up the velocities again. You get the same answer. All right, so that's all I have for you. I um, hope it was of some value. Thanks.